Welcome to another edition of Energy Independence Magazine. I'm Sean Reynolds, and today I'll be speaking with Rick Bishop, the Executive Director of Southern California's Western Riverside Council of Government, whose stated purpose is to unify Western Riverside County so that it can speak with a collective voice on the important issues that affect its members. Some of those issues include promoting the use of clean energy and furthering energy independence by participating in programs like their HERO program and the Western Riverside County Clean Cities Coalition. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Could you give us an overview of the Council of Governments? Sure. Uh, councils of Governments are, are voluntary agencies, but they're housed in state law. In other words, you need to enter into a joint powers authority, get a grouping of local jurisdictions that have issues that are of common concern, and uh, the Councils of Governments respond to that. And the, the, the idea behind a Council of Governments really is that if a city has a particular issue, chances are that issue might also bleed over into the adjacent communities next to it. And so the idea is that uh, rather than having individual approaches that are replicated over and over and over again for that one particular identified issue, a Council of Governments can bring resources together, deal with an issue one time on a cost-effective basis. And can you tell us about the WR COG? WRCOG is one of these joint powers authorities. There's probably more than 30 of them in the state of California. There's about around 400 throughout the United States, so they're fairly common, uh, although the average citizen might not know much about them. Uh, WRCOG was actually formed in 1990 uh, and has expanded now to include uh, 17 local jurisdictions in western Riverside County. And when I say western Riverside County, uh, talking about all of the jurisdictions west of uh, say, say Palm Springs. So you go from Corona out to Banning and all the way south to Temecula. So it includes all uh, 17 of the jurisdictions. It includes the County of Riverside and then recognizing the importance of additional issues such as water and education uh, in the in the uh, growth of Western Riverside County in the future. WRCOG also includes the two major water districts, the Western Municipal Water District and the Eastern Municipal Water District as voting members, as well as the Superintendent of Schools in Riverside County. Uh, we mentioned the HERO program in the introduction. Would you like to tell us about the HERO program? The HERO program is, um, is just been a fantastic program for Western Riverside County. Uh, it, it came from uh, two pieces of legislation that were signed into law by then Governor Schwarzenegger a few years ago. And it, the, the legislation is typically referred to as, as PACE legislation or AB 811 was, the, was the, the main piece of legislation. What AB 811 did was it allowed for local jurisdictions to provide financing to property owners and the property owners could take that financing and use it to make um, energy efficient and water conservation improvements to their home or their business which isn't anything real unusual, but the unusual part and what made this appealing is that that financing in most cases um, is paid back. It's paid back through the property tax uh, payment that that property owner makes. And then in most cases, when the property owner moves, uh, the, the, the payment stays on the property so that the new property owner that comes into that home or business and is benefiting from those energy and water efficient improvements that have been made, they pick up the payment. So that, that linkage to the property tax made uh, this vehicle of financing particularly appealing to folks because we found out that there are a lot of people that would like to improve their home with energy efficient improvements, solar or new doors and windows or a new HVAC system, uh, things that are energy efficient. It's just they weren't sure if making that uh, upfront investment would, uh, they would be able to recoup that depending on how long they would stay in the property. And so this largely overcomes that by keeping the uh, in most cases, again, the property tax, the payment affixed to the property tax payment, and then as property shift owners, uh, the new property owner takes in and picks up the payment. Rick, how does the HERO program relate to commercial enterprises? When I mentioned the 5,000 projects that were approved uh, to date with the HERO program, those are all residential projects. The first component of the program that launched was all residential and uh, we've been waiting to get the commercial side of the program started and, and we're real pleased to be able to say that we've just launched the commercial piece of the program within the last month. So it's up and running and we expect it to be every bit as popular as the residential program, if not more popular, because when you take a look at energy use in any urban region, uh, there's more energy use that comes from non-residential uses than from residential uses. So we really think that, that is a, if that's a telltale indicator, we think that the commercial uh, part of the program is going to uh, be very, very successful and result in tremendous energy savings in the region. Rick, can you tell me some of the benefits you like most about the HERO program? They're really widespread. There are certainly 
uh, economic benefits in this program because uh, we know that the program is providing uh, contractors in the region with jobs and uh, that's been a huge benefit that we're hearing from contractors that are that are keeping their their businesses open they're expanding their businesses so there's a there are a ton of jobs uh, that boost the local economy um, for contractors that are working with us on the program uh, the energy savings are also significant as well I mean we all know that we're under uh, tremendous uh, pressure uh, to reduce energy usage and to find ways to uh, be able to accommodate future growth in, in this subregion. And one of the ways to do that is by, you know, finding a way to save energy. And so the energy savings that come from a program like this are significant, not only for the region as a whole, because it really serves to either reduce or delay the, the need for, you know, future energy uh, generation and transmission. Um, for the property owners themselves, I mean, this is a wonderful way for them to make improvements to their home or business and to experience some energy savings on that as well. Uh, and then, you know, there is a, there's a, a lot of uh, discussion about reducing greenhouse gases. There's a, a huge state law, uh, AB 32, that was passed in California that requires tremendous reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. And when you save energy, you're also providing and contributing to those greenhouse gas emissions reductions. So, you know, what's really neat about the program is um, it works equally well if you're on the economic development side or the, or the environmental side. Uh, and so there's really no downside in the program. It, it, it cuts across a number of, of things that have, have previously been, been viewed as being mutually exclusive. So this is a great program for fusing together economy and environment. And tell me about the how does renewable energy factor in with this? Well, renewable energy is huge. I mean, I think, you know, there's a, there's a state mandate that, you know, a, a pretty good percentage, about 30 percent of the energy that is uh, provided here in California come from renewable energy sources. And so solar, obviously, is, is one that stands out, you know, as a major contributor to uh, helping us get there. And so homeowners and business owners, especially in an area such as Western Riverside Cl uh, County, where the climate is you know obviously very conducive for solar uh, it has become a very popular uh, improvement for home and business owners to make uh, as as part of the hero program you know just to give you an idea to date um, the hero program has has launched it's been in place for about a year uh, we've already seen more than 5,000 residential property applications that have been approved um, in an amount in excess of $140 million, and about 2,000 of those projects have already been completed. And a pretty good number of those, I don't have the exact percentage, but you know, well over a quarter of those improvements are solar. Now, do you know if WRCOG is working with NECA or the IBEW? Do you, do you employ skilled technicians or do you support skilled technicians? Well, we certainly support skilled technicians, and I think this is probably one of the things that's going to separate um, this program out from many others is we work very closely um, with contractors. In fact, we have over 650 contractors um, in and around Southern California that are basically the, the, the marketing agents for the HERO program. Uh, they're the ones that uh, receive training, they become registered contractors under the program, um, and they're the ones that in many cases present the benefits of the HERO program and the financing to property owners. Now, part of that, you know, part of, part of their appeal to any particular property owner is, you know, the skilled workforce that they have in place. And so the more skilled, licensed uh, uh, folks they have on board, you know, certainly the better their chances of, of being able to get the contract and, and do the work. So uh, we think that one of the things that's really going to separate out these contractors in the future is for them to be able to demonstrate that their workforce is, is as skilled as it can be and more skilled than perhaps their competitors. So uh, the need for uh, skilled electricians um, in installing sol solar is only going to increase as the demand for solar increases in the subregion. And with the commercialization of solar energy, do you think there should be infrastructure in place for that, transmission lines? That's always a tough question, and, and it, you know, maybe the broad answer here is, you know, to recognize that uh, Western Riverside County, you know, despite the, the, the economic downturn and, and the slower growth that we've experienced in the last few years, uh, this remains one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Uh, and, you know, to even kind of extrapolate out a few years, Riverside County generally by the year 2050 is going to be the second largest county in California, only behind LA County. So uh, that, that, that's important to note because there's, there's context that we need to understand that, you know, with that kind of growth, um, you're going to need uh, tremendous amounts of new energy, you know, brought into the region to sustain that growth and to sustain the future economy. So, you know, one of the ways that, um, w w really the only way to be able to do that is to make sure we, we diversify our energy. And so, as I mentioned before, uh, that's going to include renewable sources, uh, which, 
you know, uh, we all want renewable energy, but one thing that a lot of folks fail to understand is that renewable energy often comes from distant locations, you know, out in the desert and out in areas that are windy. So that's where the energy is, is generated, but then you need to transmit it, you know, to a location, and that means uh, transmission lines, and that can become uh, certainly less popular. So that's certainly an issue that needs to be dealt with. Uh, nuclear is another, you know, source of energy that needs to be, you know, stay on the, stay on the front burner, you know, in this equation. And with the shutdown of the San Onofre plant right now, that's about 19% of the region's uh, electricity, you know, that's not being met right now. So when you take a look at, you know, the, the potential that's out there and also the potential adversity that comes with uh, uh, a, a, a energy supply that is, that is uh, not diverse, uh, then the, the consequences on the region's economic growth are considerable. So right now we need to look at as many ways to bring um, as many kinds of energy into the subregion. Um, and then the, a program like the HERO program, you know, perhaps one of the best ways to generate electricity and energy is to save the energy we already have. And that's what the program is, is really trying to do through finding ways to make homes and businesses more energy efficient. And that goes a long ways towards uh, being able to um, provide energy for future economic growth. Can you tell us about the Western Riverside County Clean Cities Coalition? Sure. The Clean Cities Coalition is a, a creature that was uh, created from the, the Department of Energy several years ago. And in Western Riverside County, uh, the goal of the coalition is to expand the use and awareness of our alternative fuel vehicles and related infrastructure. So we're kind of fuel neutral, but the idea is to find ways to uh, help local jurisdictions and ultimately the citizens and businesses in Western Riverside County uh, to reduce or eliminate ultimately their dependence on, on oil, especially foreign oil. And so we look at, uh, you know, natural gas cars, uh, electric vehicles, um, and anything and everything that's, that's in that mix and uh, try to help our local jurisdictions uh, find ways to make those vehicles more affordable and, uh, and, and replace their old fleet with these clean burning uh, uh, fueled vehicles as well as finding ways to um, promote and provide infrastructure that's necessary to fuel them. Now with the, uh, with the electrical vehicles, do you think there should be more charging stations? Should there be more charging stations say at government agencies or large shopping malls? Yeah, absolutely there should be and you know it's kind of an interesting turn of events because as you recall electric vehicles were, were, were a pretty much of an in thing several years ago and then I think the, the infrastructure and a number of other circumstances and events just weren't quite ready to, you know, allow that to launch. Um, so electric vehicles all but went away, you know, several years ago. And now we're seeing a resurgence of that. Electric vehicles, you know, the range is improving. Uh, maybe more importantly, the cost is coming down. And so electric vehicles and the promise of electrical, electric vehicle infiltration in Southern California and Western Riverside County um, is very high. And just to give you an idea, we, we've estimated that we're going to see uh, more than 30,000 electric vehicles in Western Riverside County just within the next eight or nine years. And so what comes along with that is the need for infrastructure. You know, not all of these folks uh, that have electric vehicles are going to be able or be able to or want to solely charge the vehicle in their home because they can improve their range, you know, if they're able to charge in distant locations. And so uh, one of the things that we've been working on is a PEV, a, a electric vehicle readiness study. And the idea of that is to take a look at the future infiltration of electric vehicles in our subregion and then talk about, have this discussion about where infrastructure is going to be needed, um, how we might be able to create um, zoning and uh, uniform expectations as to how that infrastructure is going to be put in place, you know, again, so we don't have 17 or 18 different jurisdictions all doing different things with their permit process, you know, and ending up with uh, infrastructure that may not be compatible as you transfer or travel from one location to the next. And as WR COG moves forward, what do you see your biggest challenges and your, and your biggest hopes in the future? Well, I think our, our challenge at WRCOG is, is to really work with our local jurisdictions to, to strive and stride together to be able to accommodate the, the wave of future growth that's going to be coming here. You know, we're, we're talking, you know, easily a million more people coming into Western Riverside County in the next two or three decades. And so one of our jobs is to help um, the citizens, elected officials, businesses understand that Western Riverside County 20 years from now is going to be a very different place than it is now and that we are rapidly undergoing a transition from being a suburban community to an urban community. So, you know, that's a challenge, uh, but it's also a huge opportunity for us to mold and work to molding Western Riverside County into a place that is seen as a leader 
you know, for energy efficiency. Um, it's seen as a leader in education and it's seen a, as a leader in land use and transportation. So that's, you know, that's the, that's the challenge and that's also the opportunity. Thank you, Rick, for joining us. Thank you very much. By bringing resources and practical assistance to Western Riverside County, WR COG's energy programs are helping property owners and local governments to increase energy efficiency and save money through reduced utility bills. The HERO program is an important step in the right direction toward energy independence, but much more needs to be accomplished with regards to infrastructure and planning. California's Inland Empire has found a great ally in Rick Bishop and WR COG, and we wish them the best of luck. I'm Sean Reynolds. Thank you for watching this edition of Energy Independence Magazine.